So we're still wrapping up the uh, nebular hypothesis here. And one of the things that um, we would like to depict for us is why do the planets have all these interesting tilts here? I sort of showed this to you when we introduced the nebular hypothesis. Mercury doesn't have much of a tilt, Earth at 23 and a half, and so on. So let me just keep going for a bit, and we'll see where these tilts come up. Um, this is a slide I wanted to tell you that I think came up in the previous nebular hypothesis video here about sort of the, the abundance of atoms in the whole universe. So this is the whole universe, not just our solar system, not just our galaxy, but the whole universe. And you can see that we're 92% hydrogen and just 8% helium and just 1% any of this other stuff and 0.02% everything else. So this is courtesy of uh, Cal Poly professor Bob Field who compiled this here. So it looks sort of like a vacant periodic chart, but it's just sort of showing you that the, atom, the, the atoms relative abundance that you would find out in the universe. So again, it's this hydrogen and helium that in the whole universe is, forms a lot of this dust that uh, starts creating solar systems like ours. And sure, there's some heavier elements like some of these that we mentioned, but that's just the relative abundance there. So mo mostly hydrogen and helium and look 0.02% everything else. So we're going to hear some professional graphics about how all this started here. You can start with number one to get the gas spinning. And you can see the effects of the centrifugal force here starting to pull out. And then you can see the effects of gravity always pulling in like that. We had some graphics on this in a previous video here. So and there we go. This is sort of like the most stable outcome right there. It sort of ends there. And then what you see is maybe just before the sun ignites, there's a big uh, collection of dust there that gravity's pulling together and something called the proto-sun and proto-planets begin to form there for the reasons that we discussed in the previous video there. So just some nice graphics from a textbook. Yeah, they're okay. Um, another example here. Here's the original dust. You have some spin arrows on there. Definitely some gravity in there. Gets spinning some more, gets flattened, and eventually something like that happens. I don't know. Okay, graphics. Just something that isn't a sketch of mine. I thought it'd be useful if you could at least see. Um, there you go. This is pretty good here. This might be sort of what everything looked like as the, uh, you know, the sun had its in, sort of original ignition, turning that on. You see this is just all the leftover stuff. The solar, solar wind may be starting to blow away the lighter elements from this area right here. Pretty nice graphic. So what's next for us then uh, with the nebula hypothesis? I mentioned it's a bit anticlimactic, I, th I think, but as you sort of get the sun turned on here in, um, over in this region right here, there's a bunch of rocks orbiting, a bunch of confused and crossed orbits. There'll still be a lot of collisions and things maybe even flying out of the solar system, but it gradually gets a little more orderly over here and even as orderly as we see today. So a lot of these rocks and things either collided with a planet or sort of got uh, forced out of the solar system by some gravitational mechanism, something like that. But either case, this is sort of what we get. And uh, yeah, well, thanks for that. Of course it isn't. It never is. There's another image for you right there. Some good ignition of the sun right there. See little planets forming in there for the reasons we discussed. Nice flat disk. Uh, of course, the role of the solar wind, once again, will be to get in this region right here and blow all the lighter elements out of there. Uh, and this is sort of a graphic of the frost line they might find from, from a textbook. I don't know. A little warmer when you're near the sun, colder when you're far away from the sun. Allows the H and the AC, HE sort of maybe to uh, condense, come together a bit there. Uh, but there's that frost line. So this is where the rocky planets are. And this is where the gas planets are, something like that. Also, just so you know, this isn't all just hypothesis. There's actually, as the, as the technology gets better, this is actually being seen happening now. And so this telescope here, Alma is a type of telescope here at, at a comma, large millimeter uh, telescope with high resolution capabilities, that sort of thing. Um, this is actually a real image. It looks like something right out of that textbook, but it's a real image. So they've actually found an area in our galaxy where this formation is ap actually happening. So see, it looks like the ignition, the ignition has occurred and it looks like there's some clearing of these orbits in here where the material has, start, has started to condense into planets and things. So this is a real image, so it's something that's actually happening. And one of the places it's known to be actually happening right now is this is our good old constellation Orion that we all love. There's Betelgeuse right there. There's Rigel, you know, and here's the belt right here. Uh, that right there is Mintaka. Remember, that's due east and west on the celestial equator. So it turns out that sort of right here in this region right here is, uh, you know, solar systems are forming. 
sort of right now as we speak in the spirit of the nebular hypothesis. Okay, we'll start this slide up in the next video.